Hello, Sarasaurus here again, and this is going to be a quick review over this new update of Dungeoneering. Today, Jagex finally released Dungeoneering Badge 1.5. This gave players new abilities in Dungeoneering and out. I'll be covering both, so let's get started. First off, the lobby area of Dungeoneering has been dramatically improved. The area has gotten a construction update in itself. Pretty much the area is bigger, and it looks like a temple now. Also, they made auto-grouping rooms easier and more convenient to use, but no one uses them anyways. I like this since it's going to give more room for players to find teams. Inside Dungeoneering, you're allowed to upgrade and change your ring kinship to certain roles. These roles include melee, range, magic, and skiller. For complete details on the rings and specials, read the knowledge base or check the video description. In order to upgrade your ring, you must spend Dungeoneering tokens. The cost to level the ring gets greater as you go on, roughly double in the cost as you go on. The cost starts at 135 tokens for tier 1 and it goes all the way to 235,000 for tier 10. If all is spent on a certain roll, you would have used around 323,000 tokens. In Dungeoneering, they have created group gate stones. Only the team leader is allowed to play the gate stone though. Basically all it does is allow all teammates to use it. The teammates can use it by the big group teleport at the base or they can use 3 law runes with 64 magic to teleport instantly. Keep in mind you can still use your own gate stones. The gate stone portal is the default construction item. To change it, simply right click it and create a new item. This can range from farming patches and altars to something fun like a photo booth or a cape stand for 99 dungeoneers. Last major update inside Dungeoneering is the logout, or when you DC. Basically if you log, you will log back to the exact same spot you logged out with your items below you. You are also able to keep your familiar. If you are soloing, you only have 10 minutes to return to your dungeon or you will lose it. This is plenty of time just in case you DC or lag out from a dungeon. Finally, Jagus has updated Dungeoneering for outside Demon High. These are called hidden resources. Finally, you can get money or rewards from training your Dungeoneering skill. I will be showing all the dungeons in order and explaining a little of each. Also, you will reward extra experience for opening them for the first time. Edgeville Wilderness Dungeon. This is a good place for lower levels to camp for herbs. Dwarven Mines. It is only filled with dwarves and silver ores. However, there is a bank deposit, so banking ores would be almost like living rock caverns. Edgeville Dungeon. This dungeon is next to the Hill Giants. This room is filled with Hill Giants and Limford Spawns. Karamja Volcano. This place is next to the Lesser Demon Inn. This dungeon room is filled with Imps and Lesser Demons. This is a good place for free to play training. Dungeoneering Peninsula. This place is directly south of the boat when you get to Demon High. This island is full of maple trees and willow trees. The Waterfall. This dungeon is located next to the fire giants. This room is filled with fire giants to avoid the crowded spots outside. The Mining Guild. The Mining Guild dungeon is next to the stairs. This has ores like mithril, but it also has a runite rock. This makes it an easy spot for free to play to get runite ore. Taverly Dungeon. This is one of two dungeons in Taverly's Dungeon. This place is filled with hellhounds and multi combat. I am not 100% sure if you can use a cannon down here, but I bet you can use the summoning familiar to help you with your slayer task. Taverly Dungeon 2. This one is next to the Blue Dragons. This dungeon room has blue dragons and a lot of blue dragon scales. By the time you pick them all up, they would have spawned, so dragon scales are extremely easy to get now. Merok Sewer. This place is at the end of the sewer, and you can also use a shortcut to get here faster. This place is filled with moss giants and six magic trees. Also, this place has a large amount of limited roots than the hill giant room. Chaos Tunnels Simply head to the black demon room in the chaos tunnels. This room is filled with black demons and multi. This is perfect for slayer. Just don't forget to pray melee. Alcor Ridge Mining Spot This place has gem rocks like Shiloh Village, gold ores, and a spawn for implings. 
This place is a good place to get rich off of ores and possibly kingly implings. Wormhaven Dungeon. This dungeon is located next to the Metal Dragons. This place is filled with steel and iron dragons. Also, anvils are located here for players to use the bar drops for smithing XP. Hammer is not provided though. Finally, the best dungeon yet, the Frost Dragon Lair. The Frost Dragons are located under the Mudskipper Point, as if you were heading to the Skeletor Wenvers. These dragons use fire breath and magical ice attacks. If ranging, simply use an anti-fire pod and a shield and just pray mage. For melee, have melee, defense armor, anti-fire pot, and shield, and pray mage. These dragons have a 100% drop rate for frost dragon boons, which are 180 prayer XP when buried. At the time of the release, they are 20k each. Also, these dragons have the ability to drop draconic visages and even effigies. You can easily make money off of these dragons. To conclude, I really love this update. I understand that dungeoneering is far from finished, and there is a lot needed to be work on it, but this is a step in the right direction. I will have to give this update a 5 out of 5. I really love the rewards outside and inside dungeoneering, and you can also make money from this now. For the future, I hope to see dungeoneering batch 2 with more ranged weapons, mainly a crossbow, more bounded items, more floors, hopefully eliminating discrimination and making them worth getting 99 or 120. Anyways, comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you guys later.